Some documents have been released on Donald Trump's so-called university. Some of this stuff was released, I believe, as early as 2013 or 2014, and uh, some of it was released just this week. And the facts here are absolutely unbelievable. So I want to run through some of them with you so you can get a full picture of what actually went on at his so-called university. So 5,000 people attended. Uh, it cost them, get this, $40 million to go there. Um, Trump marketed the whole thing like he'd be there and he's personally responsible for setting up the curriculum and uh, he never showed up once. <laughs> so already right off the bat here just lies. Yeah, in my university, the Trump University, it's great. I, I'm there. I do all these things. So, uh, one of the things that was promised to the people is, oh, you know, you're always going to be there. You're going to get to take a picture with him and stuff. They're like, oh, okay. In their mind, they think, oh, b brilliant businessman. He's going to help me out and he'll be there, take some pictures and stuff. No. There was a life-sized cardboard cutout of him. And they would all have to go up and be like, Oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. <laughs> now, also, let's just back, uh, let's just rewind here, backtrack here for a second. Let me point out that you can't do that. Like, you can't just say, "Hey, I set up this university." That's not the way it works. That's like if I were to come out here and say, uh, "Welcome to the Kyle Klinsky Show. I'm a licensed medical doctor, and I'm going to go ahead and give you guys uh, treatments and cures for various things." Okay, that's just fraud, because I'm not that, so I can't say I'm that. By the same token, you can't just call whatever you're doing a university. A university needs to be accredited, and there's a process to go through. Okay, you got your license, you go to, you take care of this, you take care of that, you get the approval from the proper boards, so on and so forth. But Trump was just like, university, Trump University. I mean, that's in, that's brazen stupidity. It's unbelievable that he really thought he could get away with something like this. So, uh, more goofy stuff here. They would play the theme song to The Apprentice at the beginning of the classes and at the end of the classes. How does anybody with any self-respect go to, go to this and go, oh, this must be legit. <laughs> They're playing the theme song to The Apprentice. Uh, and then they claimed at this university that uh, there were lenders to the university who had insider access. And, you know, if you come and you partake, well, you get access to this insider list, and then you have potential business connections. So it's almost like people thought when we, we go to this thing, we're going to get access to other people who are rich, who are willing to do business deals, and they'll connect us with people who are willing to give us a shot, basically, is what people were thinking. Well, guess what? The list was totally made up. It was literally jacked from a magazine. Like, you know those magazines that have, like, the lifestyles of rich people and whatnot, and businessmen, and sometimes it says their net worth and shit? They just jacked a list from one of those magazines. Like, here's the list. <laughs> no, that's from a magazine. You don't have an, an actual list of people who are willing to do business with these people. It is such an incredible scam! This is such an obvious scam. Now, uh, furthermore, they claim that there was this investment hotline that you get access to, uh, when you go to the university, no line existed. Now, then when people would say, okay, come on, I need, like, you said this thing exists, so how do I get access to it? What's going on here? They would do this classic bait-and-switch scam move called an upsell. They go, oh, no, okay, so the what happens is we're gonna, we tell you about how great Donald Trump is, we give you a few of his secrets sprinkled in here, but then if you really want access to that hotline, for example, and some other great stuff, well, you need to buy the elite version of the class. And then the people who did get the elite version, they're like, they didn't give us anything extra, and there's still no hotline. No hotline exists. Again, this is unreal. So... Uh, they claimed that all of the teachers were handpicked by Trump. Not a single one of them were handpicked by Trump. The teachers were uh, people who, some of them were known scam artists and had been busted before, and they're teaching this so-called university. Uh, there were also people in the university, remember, this is about how to do uh, get real estate wealth. There were some people who were teachers at this university who bankrupted themselves from real estate deals. 
That's unbelievable. How do you hire somebody? That's the last person you would want to hire. That's insane. That's like teaching a class on morality and having Dick Cheney lead it. It doesn't make any sense. And uh, also, they, they hired people who just had nothing to do with anything with real estate. Like, they would take people who were fast food workers, for example. So, I don't know. You seem like you're smooth. Uh, let's go. You're, you're hired. Uh, now, when they did these upsells, which, again, is a classic bait-and-switch scam move. Uh, they would try to upsell people as much as $35,000. And they would tell them, look, we want to help you, but you're not going to succeed unless you get buy the $35,000 version of this. And oftentimes, like, they go on to detail how they preyed on uh, people who were really poor. They preyed on uh, disabled people. There are some stories now that broke about how uh, if they if they learn that you were in the military, they wouldn't even let you in. So you're basically again, this is like scam artist 101. You're trying to weed out the people who you think are the suckers and the people who you think will bust you eventually, and that's what they did. It's this is so, so sad. It's so sad. Uh, and then uh, Trump claimed that he made no money from it. This is a claim he's repeatedly made. Well, guess what? He made over five million dollars from it. You also have the New York uh, Attorney General's office. They have him on record. They have public statements of his saying things like, I made no money from it and a million other things. And then they have, uh, you know, testimony from him where he says the opposite. So in classic Trump fashion, he just lies and he's like, there's no consequences. I'm going to lie and there's no consequences. <laughs> now, you might be thinking, well, how did he get away with all this? Because this is so obviously wrong and illegal. And the answer is he didn't necessarily get away with it. There are still cases ongoing right now. So listen to what the Attorney General of New York said this week. A lot of this looks slimy and sleazy to a lot of people, bilking people out of money, making false promises. But what is the specific crime as you see it? It's fraud. I mean, this is a straight up fraud. It's like selling people uh, something you say is a Mercedes and it turns out to be a Volkswagen. And even if some people say, well, I actually kind of like the Volkswagen, it's still fraud because it's not a Mercedes. This was not a university. And in New York, we are a little sensitive. You can't just put up a sign saying Scarborough Hospital, Scarborough University, Scarborough Law Firm. I told him. I told him. He did not listen to me. Well, I, it's, it's not a university. Trump's role was really as the pitchman. And we've got his videotapes, and we've got his sworn testimony, which undercuts every statement in the videotapes. He said, my hand-picked experts will teach you my personal secrets. He and the president of the university have already testified under oath. He never met the instructors. They weren't hand-picked. They weren't experts. Some of them came out of fast food and retail. And he had nothing to do with the, the secrets, supposed secrets <clears throat> that we're talking, because he had nothing to do with the curriculum. So people were led to believe they were getting the personal secrets of Trump during hard economic times. We're talking about 2008, 2000. 2009, 2010, people wanted to scramble to find a way to make money. He duped them in. Thousands of people paid millions of dollars. And we're out to get them their money back. It's fraud. It's straight up fraud. Now, with all of this evidence and all of these details, you would think that Trump would be like somewhat of a normal human being in responding to this and just www.shh.com. Nope. Typical Trump fashion. He tweeted yesterday about this. That many people are saying we should reopen Trump University. After the case, we should reopen it. This guy is such a lowlife that it's almost hard to comprehend. He, when he is most guilty of something, what does he do? Go on the offense. But the thing is, that that works. So his followers, the people who are voting for him, who are already big-time Team Trump, there's no amount of evidence that are going to make them go, oh, come on, dude, you've been busted. Look, I see the evidence, I see the data, I read the articles. No, they just go, yeah, yeah see, that's further evidence that or proof that he didn't do anything wrong. Also, the judge who released these documents, so this was part of the case, released it to the general public, uh, he is Hispanic. So what did Trump do? It naturally doesn't address the substance of the documents because the substance prove exactly what this is, like I just went through with you. Trump goes on Twitter and says, uh, this guy needs to be removed from the case. He has an anti-Trump bias. Everybody's like, why? He's like, he's Mexican. <laughs> 
Now, half the time Trump's out there, the Mexicans, they love me. I'm going to win the Mexican vote. Now, all of a sudden, when it's somebody with a Hispanic background, who, by the way, is American, obviously, he's like, no, you're biased because I'm going to build a wall. So he's biased. Okay, that is playing the race card 101. You're not addressing the substance of what's in those documents. You're not addressing the facts of Trump University. You're just like, I don't know, Mexican, something, biased against Trump. No, you were apparently biased against all those poor people that you scammed. So, this is real, and this is a case of fraud, and who knows what the fuck is going to happen in the general election, and who knows how this will unfold, but stop and think about it. Isn't it absolutely ridiculous that what appears like the two general election candidates at this point, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, both involved in really, really important and real investigations. Hillary, we don't know. There could be an indictment from the FBI over her email scandal. Things are piling up. Evidence against her is piling up. We just had the internal watchdog report where they were like, you couldn't, you can't do that. You broke the rules brazenly. You set up a fucking private server in your house. Yes, you endangered, uh, you know, secret, top secret information. Yes, that's a problem. Yes, you can't do that. And what are you hiding? Why'd you put a private server in your house? So there's a real investigation there, and here we have a real fraud case. So, God damn it, I've never felt the burn as much as I'm feeling the burn right now. Not just because he's better policy-wise, but also because the other two really, really look like criminals.